When you first open Painter X3, you'll notice that the interface looks almost identical to Painter 12. And I'm just going to quickly review the main elements of this interface. So we're going to start in the top left corner, and you'll notice we have the brush selector. And this is the key to unlocking the heart and soul of Painter, and that's all the hundreds and hundreds of wonderful brushes. Whenever you select a brush variant from one of the brush categories, you're going to be able to control the basic characteristics and parameters through this property bar. This is a contextual palette. What I mean by that is that it's affected by the current tool. So if you choose any other tool besides the brush, that property bar will reflect the uh, adjustments that are appropriate to that tool. And likewise, within the brushes, each brush variant will have appropriate um, adjustments available in the property bar. So you definitely want to make good use of that. You'll notice something new in Painter X3 that you haven't seen before in Painter 12 or earlier versions, and that is a brush search box there. Very, very useful. And this allows you to type in sort of keywords, characteristics, or variant names or partial names, and very quickly find the brushes that you're looking for. Then when you come to actually paint and you want to sort of pick color, the uh, color panels are there grouped together. And you'll see we've got the color, the mixer, and the color set libraries panels. Above those, we have the navigator. Uh, this is very handy if you're zooming in and out. You want to control uh, the zoom. You want to control where you're looking at in your image. Um, there's also other uh, facilities in the navigator, um, including the control of things like the impasto, turning it on and off, plus some image data itself. Down the bottom, we see the layers and channels panels. The one that's going to be most useful most of the time is the layers panel. This is actually very important to be able to see this while you're working in Painter, um, since some of the brushes generate their own layers. You want to keep an eye on what's going on with the layers. Plus, you may want to work in layers depending on the type of project that you're working on. The channels is very useful if you get into working with selections and wanting to keep and save selections for future use down the road, then um, you can save them as channels. On the left, I already mentioned there's a toolbox, and so that's giving you access to a whole variety of different ways of working with your image. Some are connected with selections, some to do with uh, text and shapes above uh, the image, um, some to do with some wonderful um, overlay tools uh, to do with uh, perspective, uh, layout grids, divine proportion, um, also to do with symmetry, mirroring, kaleidoscopes, and basic manipulations uh, of your canvas. So that's all there within the toolbox. And then the final thing that's in this uh, default palette layout is the media selector, which gives you some easy access to the media or art material libraries. So that's it for the very quick, simple roundup of the basic interface of Painter X3.